show, and that, of course, is none other than Mr. Matthew West, who we happen to have with us live in studio. It's good to see you, my friend. Good, sir. It's been a long time. It's been too long. I think the last time we saw each other was at, like, an auction for uh, these backyard playhouses. Yes. I think that was literally the last time we saw each other. They called you and me in to be judges. Yeah, Yeah. and you guys bought one, and I I remember running the bid up, trying to get people to run the bid up against you. (laughs) It was for charity. You were crushing me. I know. And my daughter was with me, which was the mistake. I learned, don't bring your daughter to like a... Um, a playhouse no, auction because no. they're like, Daddy, Daddy, I need that playhouse. Uh, and then I, you were you were driving because you were like the auctioneer. Yeah, I was running on, the bid let's up. Let's get that price up. I believe Matthew West is bidding on this. <laughs> you might want to beat Matthew West. <laughs> well, you should see my backyard now. It's, Did you get it? Yeah, I bought it, and it's like this huge replica. It's a replica of. Um, a famous, you know, Nashville restaurant called Puckett's, yeah. you know, the, the meat and three Southern restaurant. And, uh, it's in my backyard. But the funny thing is, is I have like zero backyard. We live <laughs> in this neighborhood where it's like shotgun homes, you know, yeah. so you don't have a huge yard and they had to like tear down the fence and tear up the, it, it became the <laughs> biggest debacle of the whole neighborhood. <laughs> So, and I blame you. Yeah, thank you. <laughs> at least you're allowed to have them. I can't even have them at my age. You can't have these no. playhouses? No, huh? Which is, is a bummer because I would have liked to have had one for me, well, not even for my kid. <laughs> have you seen the show where it's like people living in tiny what, houses? Tiny houses. If there's a show on TLC or Discovery that is you bizarre, know about it. I, I've seen it. Okay, well, this show, Tiny Houses, this playhouse we bought, just to give your listeners a vision of it, it would like dwarf. Some of the tiny houses. It's yeah. big. Could you live, uh, we're talking to Matthew West, could you live with your family, because you have two daughters now, and, and your wife, could yes. you live with your uh, family <laughs> in a, in a, in a well, I guess these things are like 400 square feet or smaller. In the playhouse or in the tiny house? In the tiny houses. I, man, okay. Could I, you do that? You know what? Three years ago, I would have said no way, but my wife and I started homeschooling in the last three years, and um, my two daughters and I are on the road we're all on the road together. And so we've that's been, cool. now we've been cooped up, but on a tour bus that's bigger than, I think probably bigger than 400 Oh, square it's bigger feet. than those houses. Those tiny houses are tiny, but you've got a new show here, Tiny Tour Bus. <laughs> and you guys could actually sell that to like TLC. It's ingenious. I, I believe it's called a minivan. <laughs> yes. Yeah. That is what a tiny tour bus is. <laughs> uh, we're going to do something called three things. Okay? okay. So the way this works is I need you to tell me three things about you, Matthew West, that I don't know. Even okay. though I've read your Wikipedia and I know a lot of things about you. Uh, and if I know it, Becca's going to throw something at you if, I, if, if it's something I don't know. Okay. So, so I'm in trouble if yes. I say something that you don't. Okay. For sure. Well, immediately when you started talking about like psychological stuff, I started going back to my childhood as a preacher's kid. Mm-hmm. And um, and so I'm going to tell you three things from my childhood. Fantastic. That you, that you don't know. Okay. Okay. So the first one is um, uh, we had a group called uh, Royal Rangers at my church, which was like... Uh, is that cr- like the knockoff cubbies? Yeah, or it's, something? Like a, it's okay. a Christian Boy Scouts. Oh, okay, very good. And so um, it you know, raised you to be a good uh, Christian scout. Right, good. <laughs> and um, the leader of it, because I was the preacher's kid, he would always make me pray. That makes sense. To open up the meetings. And we were there meeting on a Wednesday night. So, you know, the church, the adults are meeting in their church group on Wednesday night, and the kids are at Royal Rangers. And one day, I was just, I don't know what got into me, but I was like, I don't, why do I have to pray today? And he's like, because you should set the example. You're the preacher's kid. It's a lot of pressure. And, as I, a said, child. and I said, why? Well, I don't want to pray. And it wasn't that I didn't want to pray, it was that I just didn't want to be always singled out and, and so, told and forced to yes. pray. So the, 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 the Royal Rangers leader said, okay, you can either pray right now or you can leave and go to your, <laughs> sit in your dad's office. And I don't know. It was like a moment of William Wallace, like bravery. Freedom. And I stood up and I said, well, I'm not praying and you can't make me. <laughs> <laughs> and so I got kicked out. This is my yeah. little tidbit about me is, Matthew West got kicked out of Christian Boy Scouts. I got kicked out of Royal Rangers, awesome. and uh, that was my. I, there's no badge for that, by the way. No, <laughs> no. no, I don't, and I don't think that's one your dad would sew on. No, I'm I was so in disappointed in you, but it's, I got to put this patch on. It's the badge of shame. <laughs> so that's number one. Okay, two. We got Matthew West here. Okay, number two. Uh, okay, I'll go to a wound. 
Oh, good. Oh, boy, you're all woundy. <laughs> like a wounded fawn. I didn't realize this. Okay. So, um, growing up, I was made fun of because of my weight. Oh, for real? Yes. And um, That didn't just happen as an adult. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Wound three. Wound number <laughs> three. Becca just hit me with something. Very good, Becca. You're supposed to hit him. You should have hit him with something bigger. <laughs> so, so, the reason why I struggled with my weight was because my dad's idea of exercise was that we would um, take a bike ride. Um, all the way to Dairy Queen. Oh, yeah. And then, and then you know, you're not supposed to uh, ride your bike for like 30 minutes after I think you that's eat swimming. Oh, yes. it swimming. Yeah, I think that's swimming, well, actually. Whatever the thing was, <laughs> we would literally eat our ice cream and then call my mom for a ride home. <laughs> and we'd put our bicycles in the trunk. And so, but in sixth grade, I'll never, I'll never forget this. In sixth grade, I, it was when I found out that my first name, they called me Matt. Okay. Matt rhymed with another word. Oh, and fat. then that kind of very good fat you west. Right. Oh, and so that messed with me. Interesting. Like, that messed with me as a kid. Kids in a don't big realize way. that they don't realize the things they say in jest or out of their own insecurities in elementary and high school. That's it. They stay with people forever. Like That's you're it. a successful, well-adjusted guy. You got a beautiful family. Like everything's there yeah. for you, but you still remember that. And guess what? Like still to this day, there's some nights like before I'm getting ready for a concert. I'll try on like seven different shirts. Really? And my wife will be like, Matthew, they're all the same color. You look fine. Get out. And so there's sometimes that insecurity will still pop up. And it's like, you know what? Thank you, Wally, for bringing me back to the yes. root of we're, that we're, This is healing. This is healing. What girls don't know is girls have fat jeans. Guys have fat shirts. <laughs> yeah. You do, don't you? Because oh, you totally. put on the shirt, and if your belly sticks out a little too much, it's another shirt. We're going to an XL. That's what you yeah, do. We're going to the XL. You know, that's it. That's it. You know what? I think that you've done some great work. I'm going to let you off with two, because okay. I don't think I could handle another one. So I wound. did good? Yes, you did oh, great. Man, I was you did gonna great, tell Matthew. You about some weird things now. No, I'm just kidding. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I want to talk about like some new music that you have out, which is uh, your song Day One yeah, and, and, and things like that. So uh, wh- where did this song Day One come from for you? Well, um, as uh, your listeners might know, you know, I've been on this journey. I still give people the opportunity to tell me their stories, and I've collected over 40,000 stories in the last six years. And uh, and so songs like Forgiveness that was just playing, you know, they're all from somebody's true life story. They wrote to me and shared with me. And uh, there was a guy who, you know, basically I started noticing a lot of themes in the stories that I was reading, Wally. It was like people were sort of counting days. And what I mean by that is someone would say, you know, I've been sober for 37 days. Yeah. Or um, somebody who was battling with self-harm said it's been it's been 63 days since, since, I, I, cut. since I cut, you yeah. know. And, um, man, I started thinking that in a lot of our lives, like, we get in these, we get caught up in these, like, spiritual winning streaks. Like, and I'm like that, you know. It's like, man, how many days have I read my Bible in a row? Like, and I'm feeling really good if I've gone X amount of days without sinning or making that mistake that I usually fall into. And it's like, then when the winning streak ends, which it inevitably does, right? It's like, we all fall short. We all make mistakes. Then you're just... The chasm, Rock bottom, the you know? chasm you fall and into, and the devil's beating you yeah. up. And so I got um, a story from a guy named Josh who said, "Man, I'm not gonna lie. I've been to prison. Spent ten years there. I made some really bad choices. I came from a bad life, but I made some bad choices. But while I was in prison, I got saved, and I made a commitment that when I got out of prison, I was gonna change my life." He said he got out. And uh, nobody would give him a chance. Yeah. Right. Who wants yep. to hire an ex-convict? So here yep. he is. He can't get a job. He said, finally, there was a Christian couple who ran a pizza restaurant and they said, uh, we'll take a chance on you. Gave him a part time job making pizzas in the back. He said, I just wanted to let you know that that's all I needed was that chance. And today I'm the general manager of that pizza. restaurant. That's awesome. And to me, it was like, you know what? For, for some people, day one looks like a pizza. Yeah. You know, that's what that's why I wrote that song was the thought of like going, you know what? When we make the commitment to change, when we make the commitment to put God first in our life, no matter where we are, whether we're in jail, whether we're in the worst situation in life, it's day one of the rest of our lives. And, uh, and day one won't always look like day 100, you no. know? And sometimes it is that small little blessing that yeah. starts you on that that path. We're, we're talking to Matthew West. Uh, it's interesting you bring that up because this is a tough one for me because my brother's actually in prison. Oh, wow. And uh, he just, he's just he been there now a little over a year. Wow. And uh, it... It was it was really like a bad day when he when he went oh. in. It 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 
killed me, you know. And um, but the crazy thing of it is, is to see what God has done for him. And I mean, I grew up with this guy, you know, and stuff. And so when when he calls me and starts talking about God and His forgiveness and His goodness, and wow. I'm praying for you and your family, it, at first there was obviously that little like, okay, are you? Is this a jailhouse conversion? Yeah. Is is this real? <laughs> and then you see more and more through his life the difference God has yeah. made. You know, he's got a lot more day ones, unfortunately, yeah. until he's out. Um, but, but it's but change is possible. No and doubt. So hearing that story, yeah, is cool because I know he's gonna have a hard road when he gets yeah. out, trying to get back into life. Yeah. How do you? I mean, how do you do that? And and once you and here's the thing too is I, the stories that I read from people, it, it resonates with me because what I find is for so many people, the hardest person to forgive in their life is the one they see when they look in the mirror. Yeah. You know, it's like we sing about God's forgiveness, but we don't let ourselves off the hook. And I, it's funny we're talking about this because I was just visiting a prison in the state of Florida, and with me was Renee, the woman who inspired that song, Forgiveness, mm -hmm. and Eric, the drunk driver who took the life of her daughter, who served 11 years in prison. And the three of us visited two prisons, and I stood up and sang, and I want to tell you something. I saw joy, Wally, inside the walls of a prison that I did not expect to see in a million years. That's On cool. top of that, here's the crazy thing. They're listening to Christian radio inside the walls of those prisons, and they're singing every word to Hello, My Name Is. Yeah. And I was, and I was blown away. But I, I was crying the entire time there. And, and one by one, inmates would come up and talk to me, and they're crying, and they're like, just pray for me, pray for me. And... And man, that's what we hold on to is the verse in Lamentations 3, verses 22 and 23 reminds us that, you know, if God had a day planner for each one of our lives, it's every day would have the same number on it, day one, because it says his mercy is new every morning. It doesn't matter what kind of sentence the judges have placed on us. No, it doesn't matter what kind of sentence the devil's tried to make us believe that we need to live under the rest of our lives. The, I had a woman come up to me and she said, I'm a lifer. And we have a group of lifers that we call ourselves the God Squad because mm -hmm. we found hope in God. We're never, we're never getting out of here. And they said, your song, Strong Enough, is the song that we have as our anthem. That's and cool. You know what I walked away <laughs> thinking? We are all um, condemned as lifers right. if the devil has anything to say about our lives. And, and just the reminder that even inside the walls of that prison, that woman knows that she's got a life sentence but she's as free as anybody because of what God has already done by sending his son Jesus on a cross. And, and the fact that she is holding on to that hope made me walk out of that prison knowing, man, I'm a free man, and sometimes I live like I'm in prison. Yeah, that's the crazy thing. Right? That is definitely the crazy it's thing about that. a powerful thing. Well, I love it, man. Let's do it up. <clears throat> it's Matthew West, day one on The Wally Show. It's day one of the rest of my life. show and I'm excited about this because we have Matthew West in uh, with us and Matthew West is uh, one of the uh, best artists that I know especially at uh, making up stuff on the spot which is just wonderful like well, you're really good at that thank you thank so you. here's what I'd like to do I have a couple emails that people have sent me and and they've said some things that I find amusing yes. uh, you know and, and and so i would like you to take their emails and just sing their actual email because i don't think people understand the kind of emails i actually get <laughs> these are real not edited straight up email all right, all right. Will, will you will you do this yeah I'm, i'll do it okay so so here's the first one it's from misty oh good all right and uh i have a few rhetorical questions why does everything have your name on it? And why must you talk about yourself continuously? I said continuously. <laughs> have you ever considered sharing the spotlight just a little bit with dot dot dot? I don't know dot dot dot. Maybe our Lord and Savior and Savior. And Savior, yeah. love Misty. 
Yeah, I like the love and the end is always great. Or love. in his grip. You know, that's yeah. always a fun way to end in those things. <laughs> <laughs> Nicely so that, done. That was good. That yeah. felt good. I, I wish that was the only uh, one that I had of people yeah. that hate me. But I'm looking at the sheet. It's quite lengthy. Yeah, we might not have time for all of them. Let's just do two more. Okay, all right. <laughs> <laughs> uh, okay. I'm going to go down to D for this one. Fantastic. I don't know why this Drop feels D. Right. With all due respect, I'm writing to complain. Dot, 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 again. <laughs> I know you are a talk show host and not necessarily a preacher or theologian, but I think we all have a responsibility to impart. Biblical truth, and I was disappointed that, comma, that didn't happen. <laughs> I remember this email. It was I do remember this email because I refuse to like hate on someone for sinning. And there's a whole other part of that email that's like sinners must know they're sinning. Uh, yeah, I probably should have added that in Wait, there too. I, I wasn't done yet. Oh, sorry. Love, George. <laughs> All uh, right, you got another one in you? I got one more. <laughs> this one feels kind of like a worship anthem. Oh, oh it's a worship email? Yeah, a for, worship hate mail? How many listeners you got? You got thousands. Two. Right? Two? Okay. I, I had three before this one, <laughs> and the guy bailed. <laughs> it goes like this. It's, n- <laughs> this is the- it's not out of hate that I'm writing. It's just so that you could mature and actually learn faith, learn real faith, <laughs> learn real faith. I wish I could buy the station and fly a Wally. <laughs> Sing with me. I wish I could buy the station and fly a Wally. For the record, anyone that sings with him oh, is fired. I see <laughs> that I bought the station just to. <laughs> That's so beautiful. I almost want to fire myself. <laughs> that is oh, awesome. Mr. Matthew West. And gentlemen. Knocking that out of the park there. Holly knocking just, it out of the park. Just a musical insight into my email box every day. <laughs> oh, man. I literally am almost peeing my pants. That was... <laughs> That was so much fun. I want to read more of your emails. Please let me do that. I will do that. You could be our new hate mail, oh. uh, 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 like minstrel. Why don't we? Sh- I'll share you email. We'll trade emails because okay. I get some hate mail. Oh, because I, I play ukulele. I could put a couple of years to ukulele. Dude. You do you have any uh, emails that you would like to make an impromptu song up about yourself? Oh man, because I get some you know hate mail. Sometimes. Who would hate on you, man? You know, some people like it, basically. Sometimes you just can't win for losing. That's true. You know what I mean? It's like, um, okay, so we home we homeschool our daughters. Um, they sacrifice so much to be out on the road with me. You Which know? is great as a dad to be able to Man, take your kids with you on the road. It's we awesome. love it. My wife's MVP of our family. So they're doing schoolwork on the bus, but they don't get to see their friends like they normally do. So we try to make the trips really special, right? You know, But we, we're as a family, we're spending our whole life telling the world about Jesus. You know, that's, yeah. We're on the road, and, and we love it. But there are sacrifices. So Easter was coming around, and our bus driver— um, did this really sweet thing just for the kids to make them smile that day. He had gone and gotten all these crafts, and we have a white tour bus that we're traveling on on this tour, and he made the windshield look like the face of a bunny. That's awesome. And then at the on the back of the bus, he got one of these 
fluffy white decorations and make it look like a tail. So our bus looked like the Easter Bunny. Yeah, how fun is that? Fun, if you're a right? kid, that's awesome. So I posted a picture. I made the mistake of First posting mistake. a picture saying, <laughs> saying the West family's all ready for Easter. <laughs> At which point I began to lose fans uh, by the tens as they began to criticize. Yet eating a chocolate cross doesn't bother anyone. <laughs> like I, I don't understand <laughs> that. <laughs> We're eating the head off of a harmless <laughs> bunny. I mean, that, but people began to, you know, so I'll sing one of my hate. I'll, oh, I'll fantastic. Sing, I'll combine a few of the hate messages. Oh, fantastic. From okay. Easter. This is okay. awesome. So this is Matthew West uh, musical yeah. hate mail. I gotta say, Matthew, I'm so disappointed <laughs> that you would celebrate such a pagan ritual. Oh, he's not even reading this. He has it in, to, oh, committed to memory. Oh, I read it many times because <laughs> I thought about responding many times. As a Christian artist with a public platform, you should think about that more often. The Easter's about the cross, not about a bunny. <laughs> and let me ask you this. Did a bunny ever rise from the dead? The answer is no, no, no. no Did no. a bunny ever rise from the dead? The answer is no, no, no. no, no. I'm not your fan anymore. Because you celebrate pagan ritual holidays with bunnies. <laughs> That is awesome. I'm a horrible person, man. Oh, that, but doesn't that feel good there? It, it felt kind of good. We've all laughed. We've all gotten it out. You didn't have to write a nasty email back. No. It's all good. I, I wanted to, though. I know you I did. I wanted to. I was like, man, come on. Like, let's love each other. We need each other, I right? know. But, uh, you know, so if there's... Basically, let that song I just sang tell your listeners that if anybody wondered if I celebrate the true meaning of Easter, I do. Okay? The picture of that bunny... Should not scare anybody that I'm <laughs> that I've got it all wrong. I'm sorry, I'm writing him an email right now. <laughs> Matthew West, thank you for being on hey, the show today, always man. Always fun. You're Great the best. to see you guys. <laughs>